I'm a newlywed, my career is thriving, everything's going as planned, and I feel like I'm supposed to quit my job. Textbook, this could be the dumbest thing I could do for me personally, financially, for my family. It's not what you're supposed to do in your career. My name is Hector Alejandro Guerrero. I am the now producer for The Basement Podcast with Tim Ross. For the last nine months, it's been going crazy. It's been reaching millions of people. All of our lives are changed, and I am blown away with what we get to do and the people we get to reach. It's crazy. It's, it is literally amazing. So I'm blown away. <sighs> okay. God is good. God is good. And it wasn't always this way, but I was always on the path without even trying. Most people in my 20s want to grind, hustle, and strive to be in a position that's going to set them to fame. Now, while I was a kid and always wanted to be famous like anyone, I always positioned myself in a place of service. Let me start right out the gate from high school. I was a bad student never want, ne purposefully was a bad student, never tried in school, went to summer school every single year since seventh grade because I'd always flunk and I was not going to college. So here's what I did. I said, Lord, I want to be a janitor. I'm not even lying to you. Literally wanted to be a janitor. I looked on Craigslist, quickly found out I need to get out of Craigslist. And I looked at my local church that I was serving at in youth ministry. And I became a janitor for the next four years right out of high school. Dramatic. Yeah, you're really very dramatic. Dramatic. Hey, I better wait, fool. Hey, bro. I managed the janitor team. I taught them how to use mops properly. We cleaned toilets. We saw the unimaginable in restrooms. All the things. But in that time, little did I know, I was learning Business 101. Because I wasn't only there just for four years as a janitor. I stayed for another two years in student ministry as the coordinator and assistant to the youth pastor. So this is, I, I tried to avoid school. I ended up going to business 101 school for six years straight, managing a building, human beings, finances, negotiating with public schools so that we could be in them to preach to the, uh, the, as, as a chaplain to the football players and, 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 and being able to feed them, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know. But my position was, I'm going to follow my heart, as silly as that sounds. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to go to college. I do want to clean a building and do manual labor. It's the same old saying. The, the, the positioning of my career has always been whatever leads to the next thing and what God is calling me into. Never thriving, never striving. Oh, sorry. Thriving, never striving. It's been, it's been the epitome of my career and it's what's led to everything that I do now. I'm not, I've never been trying to thr uh, uh, trying to strive. And I think that's why God allowed a lot of doors to open. So I did that for six years. It ended up being my business one-on-one -on -one school and a whole networking pool. Right during the COVID time, I was going to commit for another seven years. I said, you know what? I'm on my way to be a youth pastor. I don't want to do that. It's not in my heart. I'm good. I'm naturally a shepherd and I do naturally disciple people, but I don't want to be like a pastor at a mega church. But I say, God, whatever you want to do, I'm just going to do it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. And as soon as I had that genuine submission in my heart, I felt him tell me in my ear, you are released. You can quit now. I don't hear God talk to me like that, but I felt it that day. So talked to my boss the next few days and I gave them a two month notice, a whole two month notice because I wanted to properly step out of that season and do it the right way. So it ended up being good. I trained up the other, the next guy. And for the last two months I finished strong and I was out on my own. 
What the heck am I supposed to do now? Start this video company? I don't, I don't even know how to use a camera properly. I've never directed anything. I've never done anything. It don't matter because all that networking I did for the last six years without even knowing, just building genuine relationship, all of my friends and family from the church kept me paid because I started offering photography, video, whatever I could do to get paid. My people had me. They would hire me for little gigs, this, this, and that, and it worked out. All of that led me into the video business, but my video business wasn't making no money. Even though my friends and my family had my back, I wasn't making money to pay my bills. So I started bartending, and I bartended the whole year with my wife. I bartended the whole year, every single weekend, grinding till midnight, slinging drinks at weddings, and just to make sure I could pay my bills while I'm still building my video business. Now, I'm actually still faithful to this restaurant and this wedding company because I wanted to start a restaurant ever since I was 17. I've been connected to this bar catering company for the last four years because I walked in that restaurant and I said, hey, I want to own a restaurant one day. Can I work here for free? The owner, Jason, laughed at me and he's like, whatever you want to do, man, you can do it. So I learned all my ways around the restaurant a little bit in the cocktail world and I would help with social media videos. Been a beautiful relationship has gotten me paid in many ways, and it's worked because it's just the networking. That's just how it works. It leads from one thing to another. It's led me to do traveling trips with the cocktail company to Miami to work at Art Basel. It's gotten me hired to work with Dobel Tequila to do videos for them. So all the little things and my heart being postured to serve and not take advantage of people and try to get from point A to point B to become famous has actually given me real influence. Now, the people I have worked with in the past that have that heart of wanting to be famous, point A to point B, they're not genuine with the people around them, they're still in the same positions that they're in. As for moi, I, I look at my life and I've constantly leveled up and I can always point it back to, I was always in a position to serve, I never wanted to take advantage of people, and I grinded and I hustled in anything that I did to make it the best that I could. For them! And then it comes back and it blesses me. It just works. It literally works. I highly suggest you do it. Now, The Basement with Tim Ross has been a wild journey. A full year after quitting my job, I started bartending for a whole year straight, paying my bills, doing the dang thing. And then I felt the Lord tell me to call Sam Byers. Sam Byers is my friend from, from Gateway, and he had been recently going through a tough time. And I said, hey, Sam, let's, let's start a podcast. Let's just have some fun. So we started the podcast just for fun. It was doing pretty dang good. We called it Foundational Podcast. And then my friend JB is like, hey, let's let's interview uh, Tim Ross. I said, okay. He's like, I don't have no money. I said, roger that. So I'm getting some extra water just in case I get thirsty. Dude, it happens when you're in the middle of it. I can't, I literally cannot open this. Why is everybody so grown? No, that's crazy. But I still have mental pictures of y'all. <laughs> it's that's my, my. It's like my life is just changing. Yeah. Just because I opened up. Yes. So right, that, right, those right. are the thoughts I was having. Yeah. Right. But he already knew. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He did. So God, we give it to you in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're so excited today. We have Pastor Tim Ross. We just want to thank you for being here. Thank um, you. Appreciate we're, it. We're excited. Thanks. Really excited. But and I'm call Jay, me Tim. Yeah. Tim, all yeah, right. Tim's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Flat Tim. They're going to see Flat Tim. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> see Flat Tim. Yeah. Understood. I'll pay for everything. So now I'm, I'm in my generosity era. So I'm going to pay for Sam to be there. I'm going to rent the cameras and we're just going to make this happen. We're going to interview Tim Ross and it's going to be dope. I told Sam that night, we, we shot the podcast with Tim. It went great. And I told Sam, hey, bro, I need you to edit this podcast tonight and we didn't have no atom switcher so homeboy had to edit that thing clip by clip it was a dang nightmare and we pushed it out the next day it went viral so i knew we had we had some leeway here i emailed tim's assistant i said hey if tim needs anything let me know and i'll help him and as tim lovingly says he didn't need nothing reach out to tim's assistant mm -hmm. and don't send a sales pitch come on just say if Tim needs anything, hit me up. Yeah. She hit me back. 
and she was like, "Hey, Tim wants to meet with y'all." Yeah. So let me let me let me put the fill in that gap. Mm-hmm. So on his end, he literally says, "Whatever they need." When I get that message from Eunice, who's my assistant, mm-hmm. it was, "I'm not gonna need nothing." Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> what you, I'm not. Doing <laughs> what am I gonna need? I'm not gonna need yeah. nothing. Right? Yeah. I'm yeah. Not doing a podcast, you yeah. know. So, but thank you. That's very generous. Yeah. And so, in between me getting that message and me calling them back yeah the holy spirit said i want you to do a podcast mm. yeah, if old boy said he don't need nothing but then obviously the lord spoke to him to start a podcast because jb interviewing him it prompted everything and he worked out great but i'm down the hole y'all i pay for an editor i pay for the cameras i made no money on this interview with tim ross and then JB's like, hey, I want to interview someone in LA. I said, I am. Okay, let's go to LA. And I am, I am basically this, this I'm basically this man's manager at this point because I said, okay, well, pay for your flight. I'll pay for the Airbnb, I'll pay for the Ubers, I'll pay for the cars, I'll pay for the food, whatever we gotta do. So we go out to LA. In this time, we're waiting for Eunice to please email us back so we can work with Tim Ross potentially. And it's just a faith move. I spent that money to be out there, have fun with the guys. Maybe they'll blow up and I can just be a part to help and I'm losing my yeah, losing thousands of dollars now at this point. But God told me to do it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna overcomplicate it, I'm gonna do it. While we're in LA, Tim's assistant Eunice emails me back saying Tim would like to meet, and I said, Praise God! Oh, it worked! It worked! My plan of generosity and services worked. We meet with Tim once. It was such a beautiful day. We're in his office at Embassy Church, and Tim's like, I don't want to mess up y'all's thing. I don't want to interfere. And I'm like, Tim, 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 Tim. Us working with you is going to be a massive blessing. Us being in proximity is all we need. That We good with that. So we started working after that, and... Um, Called me the week after to come get our checks. It's just, it's beautiful. Like in this vlog moment right here. It's gonna go boom, 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 yep. boom, 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 and it's just gonna blow up. Yeah. Like you... I, that's what I feel, bro. Yeah. But I just, I, I'm like, this is a moment. Yes. Like this yeah. moment. So let, let, me, let me ensure this money's in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed. Yes, Lord. We thank you for it and we praise you for it yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Oh my gosh. We're we about to do yes. something, but we oh. don't even know what we're doing. Oh, no. It's going to be awesome. And this I is the like most it. exciting thing ever. Oh my gosh, bro. I'm excited. I love you, I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you man. We're in it together. Thank you, bro. We're going to protect each other, Amen. and God is all over it. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Oh, I'm so excited. Absolutely. It's going to be so fun. Like, legit, we have no idea what's about to happen. I literally just feel like God's just, like, smiling on this moment and just, like, a wink, you know? <laughs> like, bro, just, like, He says y'all. when we do the natural, he's going to do the supernatural. That's all and it it's is. like that. That's legit all it this is. is. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. And we're going to do the natural yep. on our side. That's of it. it. It's beautiful. You... It's a whole documentary movie of the moves that have happened and it's only been a year. This ain't, this has, this isn't a long stretch for the basement process, but may I remind you, this might be fast. This, this window might've been quick, but I can't forget about the bartending years and trying to start my video business and then working for six years at the church. It's grind behind the curtain before now this crazy famous podcast. Faithfulness, service, generosity has opened, swung open these doors now. But back then, it felt like I was in slow motion. I'm like, nothing's happening. Ain't nothing happening. I'm going to be a youth pastor. I'm going to be depressed. I don't want to do this. And God just swung the doors open because little did I know he would be, he was working that whole time for these new moments in my life. That's the simplicity of the story. I just want to encourage you. If you're really trying to get at it, here's the practicality. You need to put in the grind and build your craft. You need to network. You need to be around people and you need to build relationships. You need to get out of your head, get out of your ego, 
and you need to lay down your pride and be willing to serve and make someone else's vision come to fruition. Make a rich man's dreams come true and you'll get paid, okay? That's the grind aspect and the hustle aspect. I still use a lot of that in my life today. But now the spiritual aspect is your heart needs to be positioned to serve, to bring another man's vision to fruition, to make it happen. Like, your job isn't to be famous. Your job is to be obedient. Serve, generosity, obedience. Thank me later. It works every time. So whether you want to be a producer or whatever it is that you want to do, I think this can apply perfectly to your life. I love you guys so much. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Please comment below any questions you have. I'd love to connect with you in the comments. My link tree is below. You can support me in any way. Please go watch the Basement Podcast. Thank you for hanging out. And I love you. I'm so grateful for you. And be obedient. Be obedient. I love you. Oh,